My name is Tom Shepard and I'm a hit singer-songwriter. I travel the countryside doing shows and looking for cars and barns to restore. I wrote a hit country song called Riding with Private Malone about a guy who finds a car for sale in a barn. He said my name is Private Andrew Malone. So I'm setting out on a mission to find some hidden automotive jewels that are waiting to be reborn. With the help of some folks who know what they're talking about, we'll decide if these cars are ready to restore or rust in peace. I've always wanted to find a car in a barn like in Riding with Private Malone. The great thing about these old cars is that they all have a story. In March of this year, my buddy Larry Pancake was getting married in Amarillo. And uh, while we were looking around the barn, I came across a 51 Studebaker. It was Larry's grandpa's car and had been sitting for a few years. Man, it was covered with dirt and cobwebs and filth. You couldn't even see in the windows. A couple of the tires were flat. It was a mess. The good news is the car only had 57,000 miles on it and had been kept in the barn for years. But when Larry told me that the car was for sale, I jumped at the chance. It's a windy day here in Amarillo out at the Pancake Ranch. Fixing to work on the old Studebaker. Get her going. Pretty dirty inside. But that is a seat cover that's tore up. The seat underneath is fine. We got us one dead petrified mouse carcass that was under the front seat. Nasty. <laughs> What'd you say? I said you might watch because there's nothing saying there couldn't be a rattlesnake in this car. In the car? Well, yeah. I've been sitting in the barn for 20 years. <laughs> if mouse and rats can get in, it's so good a snake. We ain't getting no fire. No sparky sparky. Well, it looks like there ain't nothing we can do right now until we find a rotor for the distributor cap. Until then, we're just out of luck. So in July, Larry was coming down to Austin to pick up a Jeep from a buddy of his, so he towed the Sudebaker down here, and I took it over to my mechanic, Tom Butler's house. Wow, when I seen this thing roll up in my, in my shop, I just was so excited. It's just such an amazing old car. 51 Studebakers were just very cutting edge back in the day, and the bullet front end on it, and all the chrome. Just a great looking old car. I really didn't know what I was getting into when I bought this Studebaker, but it was so cool looking. You can either make a really good buy, which the owner of this car, Tom, made an exceptional buy on this car, or you can just buy a piece of junk. So it's very, very, very important that you get them thoroughly checked out by a professional before you buy them to make sure you're protecting your investment. The paint on the car is really dull and really oxidized, but Tom started using some rubbing compound on it and I could not believe how shiny he made it. It's, it's amazing to see the before and after. I really can't wait to get the Studebaker out on the road, drive it every day. All of these old cars and barns have great stories behind them. Fixing up an old car is a lot of work. It takes a lot of time and money. That's probably why most of them are still sitting in the barn somewhere. So he's got about $1,000 worth of labor in it, about $1,500 worth of parts. Uh, he gave $4,500 for it, so he's got about seven grand in it. So when this car's done, it'll be worth about $9,000. So it's definitely a restore. So here's what's gonna happen on each show. We're gonna evaluate each barn find and see what each one needs to bring it back to life. Once the evaluation's done, we'll decide whether it's gonna be restore or RIP, rust in peace. If it's a restore, then we'll follow along on the journey of the restoration process. Cars back in the day were just a work of art and uh, I just can't wait to help people get theirs out of the barn and back on the road. <laughs>